Vitamin D is actually not just one molecule, in fact it's a collective term that includes five closely related molecules called vitamin D1 to vitamin D5. But when we use the term vitamin D, we actually mean two most important of them. It's vitamin D3, also called colecalciferol, which is the natural form of vitamin D produced in the skin, and vitamin D2, also called ergocalciferol. Basically, they have the similar metabolical pathways, so basically the transformation that will occur with vitamin D3 are the same for vitamin D2 as well. Initially, liver from cholesterol synthesized 7 dehydrocholesterols that is delivered to the skin, and under ultraviolet radiation, this molecule undergo photolysis that results in the production of colecalciferol. Obviously, the rate of this reaction depends on ultraviolet radiation, and ultraviolet radiation depends on a few factors. First of all, it's season of the year. Obviously, in the summer, sun exposure is greater and thereby ultraviolet radiation is much more higher than in the winter. Also, sunscreen protection can markedly decrease exposure to ultraviolet radiation and thereby decrease the rate of this reaction. Vitamin D can also be taken from diet, but the problem is that vitamin D is present in only a few foods, as fatty fish, egg yolk and beef liver, and also up to 50% of vitamin D can be destroyed by heating during cooking. So dietary income of vitamin D is low, thereby the skin synthesis of vitamin D is a major source of vitamin D income into the human organism. But colecalciferol itself is not biologically active, and to be activated it requires additional two hydroxy groups, and these modifications are provided by the enzymes in the liver and kidney. So it must be transported from the skin compartment through the bloodstream into the liver. And what we have to understand is that colecalciferol is synthesized from cholesterol, which is lipophilic substance, and because it's lipophilic substance it cannot be transported through the bloodstream alone. It requires protein transporter. So colecalciferol binds to vitamin D binding protein that transport colecalciferol from the skin to the liver. In the liver, holocalciferol under cohydrolization to 25 hydroxyvitamin D3, also known as calcidiol. This reaction is catalyzed by the specific enzyme vitamin D3 25 hydroxylase. Now important but a little bit intricate concept. This enzyme is monooxygenase that is contained in the cell of mitochondria and microsomes. Basically, it's cytochrome P450 enzyme that is encoded by cytochrome P2R1 gene. And because of that, this enzyme also called cytochrome P2R1, where cytochrome P means cytochrome P, and 2R1 means particular genes that encode this enzyme. So there are two names for the one enzyme. So, in the liver, vitamin D undergo hydrolyzation that is provided by cytochrome P2R1 enzyme and results in production of calcidiol that has one additional hydroxy group. But this modification is not enough to activate vitamin D3, and the next modification occurs in the kidney. So, again, to be transported through the bloodstream, now calcidiol binds to vitamin D binding protein that transported to the kidney. Before the next phase, a few high yield facts about this liver modification step. First of all, calcidiol in both free and binded forms is a major circulating form of vitamin D3 in human organism. And because of that, exactly the serum levels of calcidiol used for screening for vitamin D deficiency. And in healthy person, normal range is considered to be 75 to 125, and the serum levels of less than 50 considered vitamin D deficiency. And also interesting that calcidiol, which is the end product of this reaction, is only partially inhibits the activity of cytochrome P2R1, which is the enzyme of this reaction. It's an exception to the rule because usually the end product of reaction inhibits the activity of the enzymes that catalyze reaction. It's important for us because in case if we increase the amount of administered colecalciferol, it will cause proportional increase in amount of produced calcidiol because there is very weak negative feedback mechanism. And once binded, vitamin D3 is delivered to the kidney, it undergo filtration through the glomerulus membrane and is uptaken by the proximal tubular epithelial cells. In the proximal renal tubule, calcidiol is hydroxylated to 1-alpha-25-dehydroxyvitamin D3, also known as calcitriol. This reaction is catalyzed by the specific enzyme 25-hydroxyvitamin D3 1-alpha-hydroxylase, also called cytochrome P27B1. So, in the kidney, calcidiol is hydroxylated by an enzyme cytochrome P27B1 to calcitriol that has this additional two hydroxy groups 
that makes this molecule able to bind to vitamin D receptor and thereby to exert its biological effects. Now to understand the regulation of vitamin D level in the blood, we have to know the effects of calcitriol on calcium and phosphorus levels in the plasma. Calcitriol stimulates calcium and phosphate absorption in the intestine, kidney, and also it mobilizes calcium from bone tissue. So the net effects of calcitriol is the increase in serum calcium and phosphate level. Any mutation that inactivates cytochrom P27B1 will cause vitamin D-dependent rickets type 1, also known as pseudo-vitamin D deficiency rickets. But also important that cytochrom P27B1 is also present in extrarenal sites, for example macrophages also have this enzyme. And basically it's the reason for hypercalcemia in granulomatose disease as sarcoidosis and Crohn disease. Obviously, at some point, active form of vitamin D must be inactivated and excreted. And the important concept is that to be excreted, substance must be water-soluble, so-called hydrophilic. And vitamin D, by its nature, is a fat-soluble substance because it originates from cholesterol, which is a hydrophobic molecule. And as we see with each hydroxylation, vitamin D acquires additional hydroxy group that makes this molecule more and more water-soluble. But to be excreted, it requires third additional hydroxy group. So in the kidney, calcitriol is converted to calcitroic acid. This reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme 25-hydroxyvitamin D3-24-hydroxylase, also called cytochrome P24A1. So calcitriol by cytochrome P24A1 is converted to calcitroic acid that has this third additional hydroxy group that makes this molecule hydrophilic enough to be excreted into the bile. Inactivating mutations of cytochrome P24A1 will cause idiopathic infantile hypercalcemia. To explain this, we have to understand is that if this enzyme becomes broken, calcitriol cannot be inactivated, so it will cause increase in calcitriol level, that will cause increase in calcium absorption, that will result in long standing hypercalcemia. There are two major vitamin D regulators. The first one is parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone also regulates blood calcium level. They both increase blood calcium concentrations, but the way to look at this is that parathyroid hormone is the major regulator of blood calcium level, and it can regulate blood calcium level through regulation of calcitriol level. For example, if blood calcium level decreases, it will induce increase in parathyroid hormone that will increase calcitriol level in order to increase calcium reabsorption and thereby calcium concentration in the blood. This increase in calcitriol level occurs by two mechanisms. Low blood calcium and phosphate levels and also parathyroid hormone increase concentration of calcitriol by stimulation of cytochrome P27B1 and by this they increase the production of calcitriol and also they decrease the activity of cytochrome P24A1 and by this they decrease calcitriol degeneration and these two effects combined will markedly increase calcitriol level in the blood. Another factor that regulates vitamin D metabolism is fibroblast growth factor 23. This factor is produced in bone tissue by osteocytes and osteoblasts. And fibroblast growth factor 23 is the major regulator of blood phosphorus level. It decreases phosphorus level in the blood by inhibition of phosphate transporters on the proximal renal tubule and also through decrease in calcitriol level in the blood. To explain this, let's suppose that phosphorus level in the blood increase. And in response to this, osteocytes and osteoblasts increase production of fibroblast growth factor 23, which subsequently decreases the activity of phosphate transporters in proximal tubule. This results in decrease in reabsorption of phosphorus in the kidney. But also fibroblast growth factor 23 decreases the serum level of calcitriol, and thereby it decreases the absorption of phosphorus in both kidney and intestine. And these two effects combined will cause decrease in blood phosphorus level. So high blood phosphorus and calcium levels and also fibroblast growth factor 23 decrease calcitriol levels by inhibition of cytochrome P27B1 that decrease calcitriol synthesis and also by stimulation of cytochrome P24A1 that accelerates calcitriol degeneration.